Hi, welcome to a new section of this course, Spatial Analysis. In this section, we'll use QGIS to perform many typical geoprocessing and spatial analysis tasks. We'll start with raster processing and analysis tasks such as clipping and terrain analysis. We'll cover the essentials of converting between raster and vector formats and then continue with common vector geoprocessing tasks such as generating heat maps and calculating area shares within a region. We'll also use the processing modeler to create automated geoprocessing workflows. Finally, we'll finish the section with examples of how to use the power of spatial databases to analyze spatial data in QGIS. Let's move on to the first video of this section that deals with analyzing raster data. In this section, we'll see common raster processing and analysis tasks such as clipping, to a certain extent, or mask, creating relief and slope rasters from digital elevation models and using the raster calculator. Raster data, including but not limited to elevation models or remote sensing imagery, is commonly used in many analysis. A common task in raster processing is clipping a raster with a polygon. This task is well covered by the clipper tool located in raster, within extraction. And there you'll see clipper. This tool supports clipping to a specified extent as well as clipping using a polygon mask layer. Wait, I'll brief you about this. First we have extent that can be set manually or selecting it in the map. To do this, we just click and drag the mouse to open a rectangle in the map area of the main QGIS window. Next is a mask layer, which can be any polygon layer that is currently loaded in the project, or any other polygon layer, which can be specified using select, right next to the mask layer drop-down list. If we only want to clip a raster to a certain extent, we can also use the raster save as functionality. For a quick exercise, we'll clip the hillshade raster using the Alaska shapefile, both from our sample data as a mask layer. At the bottom of the window, we can see the concrete gdal warp command that QGIS uses to clip the raster. This is very useful if you also learn how to use gdal. In section two, viewing spatial data, we discuss that gdal is one of the libraries that QGIS uses to read and process raster data. You can find the documentation of GDAL, WARP, and other GDAL utility programs at www.gdal.org slash gdal underscore utilities dot html. Now let's create the output file. Click on the select button besides the output file field. We move to the test folder, and here give the file name as output and click save. The default no data value is the no data value used in the input data set or zero if nothing is specified, but we can override it if necessary. Another good option is to create an output alpha band, which will set all areas outside the mask to transparent. This will add an extra band to the output raster that will control the transparency of the rendered raster cells. A common source of error is forgetting to add the file format extension to the output file path. In our example, it's .tiff or geotiff. Similarly, you can get errors if you try to overwrite an existing file. In such cases, the best way to fix the error is either to choose a different file name or delete the existing file first. So, the resulting layer will be loaded automatically since we've enabled the load into canvas when finished option. QGIS should also automatically recognize the alpha layer that we created and the raster areas that fall outside the Alaska landmass should be transparent. Now let's click on OK. Here we get a warning. Just ignore it and click on OK and close the clipper dialog. Here QGIS fails to automatically recognize the alpha layer. So we can enable it manually using the transparency band option in the transparency section of the raster layers properties. Let's go to layers, select properties and go to transparency. This dialog is also the right place to specify any no data value that we might want to be used. Also, we change the transparency band as band one. Now, click on apply. And here we are. You can see the change in the output. We've successfully clipped raster. Now let's step ahead to analyze elevation or terrain data. So, to use terrain analysis tools, 
we need an elevation raster. If you don't have any at hand, you can simply download a dataset from the NASA Shuttle Radar Topography Mission, that is SRTM, using this link or any of the other SRTM download services. If you want to replicate the results in this exercise exactly, then get the dataset called SRTM underscore 05 underscore 01.zip, which covers a small part of Alaska. Raster terrain analysis can be used to calculate slope, aspect, hill shade, relief from elevation rasters, and ruggedness index. These tools are available through the Raster Terrain Analysis plugin, which comes with QGIS by default. But we have to enable it in the plugin manager in order to make it appear in the Raster menu. So, in the search field, type Raster Terrain Analysis and you need to enable it. Now, go to Raster and then to Terrain Analysis. It will show you a list of tools. First one here is Slope. This tool calculates the slope angle for each cell in degrees based on the first order derivative estimation. Next is Aspect. This tool calculates the X position in degrees and counterclockwise, starting with zero for north. The third one, Hillshade. This tool creates a basic hillshade raster with lighted areas and shadows. Then comes Relief, which creates a shaded relief map with varying colors for different elevation ranges. And the last one, Ruggedness Index. This tool calculates the ruggedness of a terrain, which describes how flat or rocky an area is. The index is computed for each cell using the algorithm presented by Riley and others by summarizing the elevation changes within a 3 into 3 cell grid. An important element in all terrain analysis tools is the z-factor. The z-factor is used if the x and y units are different from the z or elevation unit. For example, if we try to create a relief from elevation data where x, y are in degrees and z is in meters, the resulting relief will look grossly exaggerated. The values for the z-factor are shown on your screen. If x or y and z are either all in meters or all in feet, use the default z-factor 1.0. If x or y are in degrees and z is in feet, use the z-factor as 370,400. And if x or y are in degrees and z is in meters, use the z-factor as 111,120. Since the SRTM rasters are provided, we need to use a z-factor of 111,120 in our exercise. Let's create a relief. First, load the SRTM file. Go to the path where you have placed it and just drag and drop it to the map. Now, go to Raster, Terrain Analysis and Relief. The tool can calculate relief color ranges automatically. We just need to click on Create Automatically. Let's give the output path. Click on the Browse button next to the Output Layer field. Go to Test and create a relief.tiff file. Now, let's change the z-factor as I said previously. Of course, we can still edit the elevation ranges upper and lower bounds as well as the colors by double-clicking on the respective list entry. When you click on an entry, this is the dialog which will pop up and you can edit to make changes. While relief maps are three-banded rasters, which are primarily used for visualization purposes, slope rasters are a common intermediate step in spatial analysis workflows. Let's click on OK and close this dialog. As you click OK, QGIS will start calculating relief. You can also see the change in the map and the relief being loaded. We'll now create a slope raster that we can use in our example workflow. Go to Raster, select Raster Analysis and click on Slope. For Evaluation layer, select STRM5 underscore 1 from the drop-down. Let's give the output layer and name it as slope.tiff. Click on Save, and now click on OK. As you can see, the resulting slope raster is loaded in grayscale automatically. It's time to move on and use the raster calculator. So, with the raster calculator, we can create a new raster layer based on the values in one or more rasters that are loaded in the current QGIS project. To access it, go to Raster, and then to Raster Calculator. All available raster bands are presented in a list in the top left corner of the dialog, as you can see over here. 
using the raster name at the rate band number format. Continuing from our previous exercise in which we created a slope raster, we can, for example, find areas at elevations above 1000 meters, and with a slope of less than 5 degrees, using an expression which I am typing here, strm underscore 05 underscore 01, at the rate 1 greater than 1000, and slope at the rate 1 less than 5. So you can see that we get the message that the expression is valid. Let's give the output layer. Go to test folder and create file with the name cal.tiff. Let's keep all the other settings as it is and click on OK. On the top of the screen you'll see a message that the calculation is complete. Cells that meet both criteria of high elevation and evenness will be assigned a value of 1 in the resulting raster, while cells that fail to meet even one criterion will be set to 0. The only bigger areas with a value of 1 are found in the southern part of the raster layer. You can see a section of the resulting raster, displayed in black over the relief layer. Another typical use case is reclassifying a raster. For example, we might want to reclassify the landcover.img raster in our sample data, so that all areas with a landcover class from 1 to 5 get the value 100, areas from 6 to 10 get 101, and areas over 11 get a new value of 102. Now, go to Layer, and then Add Layer. Click on Add Raster Layer. Select Land Cover, and click on Open. Now you'll see that land cover is added to the layer panel. So move on to the raster calculator. When you get the raster calculator dialog, first render the output layer. Let's browse and go to test folder. Here give the file name, let's say landcover.tiff. Save. Let's write the code in the raster calculator expression. Land cover at the rate 1 greater than 0, and land cover at the rate 1 less than equal to 6, the whole into 100, plus land cover at the rate 1 greater than equal to 7, and land cover at the rate 1 less than equal to 10, into 101, plus land cover at the rate 1 greater than equal to 11, into 102. It says the expression is invalid. Let's check the expression again. I'm sure we missed something. Let me check. Oh yes, we missed a double quote. So now the expression is valid. This raster calculator expression has three parts, each consisting of a check and a multiplication. For each cell, only one of the three checks can be true, and true is represented as 1. Therefore, if a land cover cell has a value of 4, the first check will be true and the expression will evaluate to 1 into 100 plus 0 into 100 and 1 plus 0 into 102, which is equal to 100. Now, let's click on OK. You can see that the calculation is complete, and we get the output as 100. Superb! In this video, we analysed raster data.